The greatest adventure is what lies ahead. Today and tomorrow are yet to be said. Hello everyone, this is Nomad of Consequence, back again with a new video. This is episode 47 in a series which recounts my ongoing Dungeons & Dragons campaign, which is now in its 10th year. If this is your first visit to my channel, you might want to go back and start with part 1 of this series so that everything will make more sense. So as always, spoiler alert, in this video I will be revealing details found in this adventure module. And just as a reminder, this is the current makeup of the adventuring party. And where we left off last time, the characters had uh, entered the fire giant lair and had done some fighting. And at this point, they were about to see what was behind this heavy red curtain to the north because they could hear fire giant voices talking amongst themselves coming from behind it. So they uh, decided to have Obrak sneak up to the corner on the edge of the curtain and peek around it to see uh, what he could see. And what he saw was several fire giant looked like warriors just sitting around talking amongst themselves. Uh, unfortunately, one of the giants noticed the movement on the curtain and uh, saw a dwarf standing there, so they all sprang to their feet and moved up to attack. So Obrak uh, continued fighting there where he was. Aramis ran around the opposite edge of the curtain and entered the room to engage with another fire giant. And the rest of the characters all worked together and uh, just pulled the curtain down so that uh, they could all more easily enter the room. In this screenshot, Thoral has gotten out his Wand of Frost and fired a Cone of Cold spell against the Fire Giants. And in this screenshot up there at the very top, you can see Aramis, or I'm sorry, Varus, Niobe, and Varus's dog attacking a, uh, a fire giant. And then down at the bottom edge of the screen, you see Thoral and Aramis, and Thoral has once again used that Wand of Frost. In this screenshot, uh, it's hard to see him. I've pointed him out with the arrow, but um, Aramis and Thoral are standing side by side, and Aramis has scored a critical hit against the fire giant that he's fighting. And then as for Thoral, uh, he once again fired off his Wand of Frost towards the north, trying to be careful to avoid uh, Varus and Niobe. And uh, this is the last screenshot that I have of this particular battle, but eventually the fire giants were defeated. So retracing their steps, uh, the characters came to a short side passage, which ended in a set of double doors. Uh, however, the unusual thing about these doors is that they were locked by a chain and padlock from the outside. So it was easy enough for Garrett to pick the lock and then Obrak opened the door and inside was a, a very opulent room uh, that had human scale furniture instead of giant. Uh, but even more surprising, the characters saw some old friends of, their, of theirs, uh, villagers from Valerial, which was the uh, site, the, their base town during their very first adventures and just as a refresher this is a uh, screenshot from back in those days way back in the very first uh, one of these videos and you can see there's Cork the innkeeper and the sheriff and the mayor and now here they all are uh, in this room in the fire giant lair the uh, sheriff, Sheriff Talon, explained to the characters that they had been kidnapped by these black-skinned elves 
who uh, had brought them all the way here and have been questioning them about the characters. And they asked them, they wanted to know who the characters were, where they're from, who are they working for, details like that. And uh, the sheriff said that they had been you know, relatively well treated here, but they were, had not been allowed to leave this room. So uh, Aramis stepped up and uh, began asking questions that only the villagers would know. Obviously, the characters were suspicious. So Aramis began asking questions that only the villagers would know. Um, but they, uh, they answered all the questions correctly. Meanwhile, uh, out in the hallway... Uh, although everything seemed to check out, Gorb decided to drink a ESP potion that he had been carrying around for a long time because uh, he decided he was going to try to read these uh, villagers' minds. And then finally, down there uh, at the bottom edge of the room, Nio cast a detect magic spell and started concentrating on the villagers. And uh, Nio could detect nothing magic about them. So uh, she just turned and started looking around the room to see if anything else in there appeared to be of a magical nature. Meanwhile, uh, Gorbs, uh, using that ESP potion, uh, the potion revealed to him nothing at all. Uh, he could get no reading on their thoughts. In fact, their minds were, t were a total blank to him. And uh, this disturbed Gorb enough that he called Varys outside, out there in the hallway, to uh, tell Varys what he had learned. And so uh, Gorb's attempt to read their thoughts alerted the villagers that their disguise was about to be exposed, so they uh, reverted to their true forms. Which, as you can see in the screenshot, they uh, essentially man-shaped tigers with claws for hands. And if you're familiar with the uh, Dungeons & Dragons monsters, uh, they are in fact uh, Rakshasas. So, of course, a uh, battle broke out. Everyone moved to engage them in combat. Uh, these, uh, these Rakshasas have very have a very good armor class and normally would be hard to hit but the characters actually made a lot of good combat roles and so for example here uh, Aramis as you can see scored a critical hit against one of the one of the monsters and uh, even Niobe as you can see uh, she scored a critical hit against one that she was fighting and fortunately, it wasn't all good news. Gorbadoc rolled a fumble in this particular instance. But uh, Niobe's critical hit, plus the help that she was getting from Garrett and Gorb, finally killed one of the Rakshasas. And when that happened, the other two uh, surrendered. The, uh, the monsters agreed to reveal to the characters where they had treasure hidden in exchange for their lives. And uh, you can see the chest pointed out there. And the, the characters accepted the offer, but on the condition that the Rakshasas agreed to be escorted out uh, immediately and that they never return here. And the, uh, the Rakshasas told the characters that they had been sent here as emissaries to the fire giants. However, King Snurry does not trust them, and he is, has uh, been keeping them locked up here in this room. So uh, they were just as happy to leave this place anyway. But uh, the only other thing the characters demanded that the Rakshasas carry along the body of their fallen comrade... The, uh, the two surviving ones really had no choice in the matter, so they agreed. And what the characters wanted to do, they wanted to make it look as if the uh, Rakshasas had somehow escaped from this room, killed the nearby fire giants, and then fled. So, uh, you know, they're trying to cover their own tracks from the fire giants as long as possible. 
So back outside, the uh, characters watched until they were certain that their rakshasas were truly gone. And then after that, the characters returned to their own hideout cave so that they could rest and regain spells. All right, well, that's all I have for now. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Feel free to leave a comment. I always like to know what you all think. And if you can, share the video. Anything you can do to help support the channel, I appreciate it. Thanks again. Bye for now. Baby.